Hey guys it's Cream. In my last video, I mentioned that I was a big fan of the Raimi Spider-Man films. And if you've seen my channel before, you could probably assume that I'm a fan of Iceberg Charts. So today, I'm gonna combine the two, and be covering the definitive Sam Raimi Spider-Man Iceberg. Now, unlike the other Iceberg videos on my channel, I did not make this Iceberg. This Iceberg was made by Reddit user Fzilla. He's actually made more than one Spider-Man Icebergs, but this is his most newest and improved version. So with that being said, let's begin the Sam Raimi Spider-Man Iceberg. And they found you amusing for a while, the people of this city. But the one thing they love more than a hero, is to see a hero fail, fall, die trying. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. Why bother? R slash Raimi memes. This is the largest subreddit for celebrating the movies of Sam Raimi, mainly the Spider-Man trilogy. It mostly consists of memes of his films, but some posts do deviate from memes, like for example showing off merchandise. This iceberg was originally posted here. Organic webbing. In the Raimi films, Peter Parker's webbing comes organically, or straight out of his wrists as opposed to a mechanical web shooter, which is way more commonly seen in Spider-Man media. There is sort of this divide amongst fans about this. On one hand, you have people criticizing this decision, saying it's not true to the character, not comic accurate. On the other you have people who are fine with it, as it is a unique spin on the character. For me personally, I'm fine with the organic webs, because I think it adds a whole body horror effect and I think that's cool. However, Toby's Spider-Man didn't always have organic webbing, but we'll get back to that later. Spider-Man No Way Home The latest Spider-Man film to come out, Spider-Man No Way Home was the last film in the Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy. In this film, several Raimi-verse villains make their return, as well as Tobey Maguire coming back as Spider-Man. It was really an incredible moment that many people never thought would have happened. Bruce Campbell Cameos Bruce Campbell is a very good friend of Sam Raimi since the two were in high school. Campbell and Raimi have collaborated on more than one film together, but most notably Bruce starred in Raimi's highly popular film Evil Dead. So, it's no surprise that Campbell has cameos in all three Spider-Man films. In Spider-Man, he plays the wrestling announcer who would announce Peter as the Amazing Spider-Man. In Spider-Man 2, he played an usher for MJ's play. And finally in Spider-Man 3 he played the French maitre d' at the restaurant Peter wanted to propose at. He was rumored to have another cameo in Spider-Man 4 as Mysterio, but sadly we never got to see it. Avi Arad Avi Arad is an entrepreneur who was the CEO of toy company Toy Biz in the 90s. He would later become the former head of Marvel Studios, and produce several Marvel films such as Iron Man, Hulk, and the Raimi trilogy. He is quite a controversial figure, as many people say he ruined the MCU Spider-Man with his creative control, and that all he cares about is selling as much toys as possible. Infamously, he is the one behind the decision to cancel Spider-Man 4 in favor of rebooting, as well as pressuring Sam Raimi into adding Venom in Spider-Man 3. There is a lot of negative things said about Arad in regards to his creative input and whatnot, but still continues to be an executive producer for Marvel to this day. Spider-Man 3 Deleted Scenes Spider-Man 3 had a lot of deleted scenes, most of which can be found on YouTube. Some notable ones include a cutscene where Sandman was disguised as a sand castle to meet his daughter, the symbiote flashing back at Peter in a mirror, and a final swinging sequence to end the film. I'll leave a list of all the deleted scenes as well as a video of them in the description if you want to check them out, as they're really interesting. Spider-Man 2.1 and Spider-Man 3 Editor's Cut Spider-Man 2.1 is an extended cut of Spider-Man 2 released in 2007. It includes 8 minutes of new footage as well as special features, which had a special look at the then upcoming Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 Editor's Cut is basically the same thing, only with Spider-Man 3 instead of 2. 
It includes alternate scenes, extended scenes, and whole new scenes. Oddly though, the editor's cut is actually shorter than the theatrical cut by two minutes. Webbed Suit The webbed suit refers to a skin available to play as in Insomniac's 2018 Spider-Man game. The suit is Toby's Spider-Man 2 suit, and was added in December of that year after a massive wave of fans asking for it. LEGO and Mega Bloks Sets Let's talk about the LEGO sets first. Through 2002 to 2004, LEGO made 11 total sets based on Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 1 sets included, Green Goblin Glider, Spider-Man Action Studio, Wrestling Scene, Spider-Man's First Chase, The Final Showdown, and The Origins. Spider-Man 2 sets included Spider-Man Street Chase, Doc Ock Train Rescue, Doc Ock Hideout, Doc Ock Bank Robbery, and Doc Ock's Fusion Lab. There were also these LEGO Jr. sets based off of Spider-Man 2, these being Doc Ock's Cafe Attack, and Doc Ock's Crime Spree. Some of these are pretty rare, and go for a pretty penny. However, after LEGO lost their Spider-Man license in 2004, Mega Bloks took over and made a couple sets for Spider-Man 3. Some of them were pretty cool, like this final battle set, but others were rather bizarre like this giant Spider-Man plane robot. Yeah, that might have been helpful against the giant Sandman. Willem Dafoe in Spider-Man 2 and 3 In Spider-Man 2, Willem appears as a hallucination that Harry is having, pushing him to avenge him and become the new Green Goblin. While this is his only role in the film, it isn't the only thing he did while on the set of Spider-Man 2. There is footage of him playing Doc Ock and having fun with the cast and crew behind the scenes. It's pretty damn awesome. In the third installment, Willem is seen yet again as a hallucination that appears to Harry. But funny enough, Willem is actually seen again as an extra at the jazz club bar where Peter takes Gwen. He actually wasn't dead, instead he was hiding away at this bar the entire time. Tie-in games The films had a total of four released tie-in games, these include, Spider-Man the Movie the Game the Movie the Game, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, and 2007 Spider-Man Friend or Foe. However, there was supposed to be one more game, this being a Spider-Man 4 game, though there is an unfinished version of it that some people have played. And most notably, the Spider-Man 2 game spawned the greatest video game song ever conceived. Novelizations All three movies got their own novelizations, which is basically just the movie but in book form. One interesting thing about these novels are that they mention other Marvel characters, like Dr. Pym, Red Skull, and X-Men. The Human Spider This was the alias Peter donned for a local wrestling promotion when he was first learning his powers, before the Spider-Man name and the iconic suit. Pizza Time I mean what more do I have to say? Hands down the most iconic meme from Spider-Man 2, and is known everywhere. Even if you haven't seen the movie, you've probably seen the meme. Bully Maguire Here we go. Bully Maguire is the name given by the fans to the evil Peter Parker in Spider-Man 3. This character is the most powerful character in all of history, even defeating Thanos and lifting Thor's hammer with ease. And that's not even all of his incredible feats. There are dozens and dozens of videos showcasing his power. There is truly no stopping the mighty meme potency that is Bully Maguire. The 2002 suit is different from the 2004 suit. Pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, they are different. Here's the differences between them, and credit to Daily Raimi Spider-Man on Twitter for posting these charts. Personally, I think the 2004 suit is a lot better. Spider-Man 4 If you're a Raimi Spider-Man fan, you know all about this. Spider-Man 4 was the cancelled fourth film in the Raimi series. It was supposed to come out on May 6, 2011, but sadly got canned in favor of a reboot. There are several videos and articles written that go in depth about what the plot would have looked like, but basically it would have involved the Vulture as the main villain, along with Mysterio, Black Cat, and the Lizard making appearances. 
Sam Raimi and Sony had disagreements about where to take the story, as they were reportedly pushing Raimi yet again to add more villains into the story. I suggest checking out Super Void Cinema's video covering Spider-Man 4, as it goes more in depth about what was going on behind the scenes. But let's not forget, we could very well be getting Spider-Man 4 in the coming future, especially since Toby came back, and Raimi himself saying recently that he thinks making a Spider-Man 4 would be beautiful. I would genuinely go nuts if it were to happen. Spider-Man 4 Fake Trailers and Teasers Man, this one brings me back. Many years ago, lots of fan-made Spider-Man 4 trailers would be uploaded to YouTube. Some of these were awful, while others were pretty convincing, especially if you were young at the time. I remember the most popular fake ones would include Lizard and Carnage in them. Super nostalgic. James Franco wanted the role of Spider-Man. Franco actually auditioned for the role of Peter Parker, and was saddened to learn that he didn't get it, because he did say that he felt it went well. After this he was offered the role of Harry, and of course got the part. Official Movie Merch Sticker This refers to a sticker that was on pieces of merchandise from the movies as a seal of officiality. They were for sure on Spider-Man 1 and 2 merch, but I'm not sure if they were on Spider-Man 3 merch, because I can't seem to find a picture nor do the action figures of Spider-Man 3 that I have seemed to have a similar sticker. Twin Towers Trailer In 2001, a teaser video for Spider-Man would be made and shown in theaters. The teaser was pretty dope, and featured Spider-Man catching a helicopter full of criminals in a web in between the Twin Towers. Of course, after the tragic events of 9-11, the trailer was removed from viewing but later got leaked in 2019. I'm pretty certain it was considered lost media for a while. On a side note, this wasn't the only piece of Spider-Man 2002 media to get recalled because of 9-11. There was also this recalled poster, which had the Twin Towers in Spider-Man's lens. Alternate Green Goblin Mask Before Willem Dafoe got cast as Goblin, the crew made a creepy animatronic mask for the character. While the mask was straight out of the comics, it was eventually scrapped because it was uncomfortable to wear and the cast were worried that it was too scary for kids. Though this animatronic mask was insanely impressive, I'm trying to picture the rest of the suit with the mask and it honestly looks goofy. Aside from this, there were other alternate Green Goblin masks pitched for the film, but we can only see these in the form of concept art. Hero by Nickelback This is a song that was written for the first Spider-Man film, and the theme song for hundreds of people's childhoods. Say what you will about Nickelback, but this one is a banger. Raindrops keep falling on my head. The song by BJ Thomas used in Spider-Man 2 when Peter is living his life freely after giving up Spider-Man. Truly a classic and a perfect choice for this scene. Drive that funky soul. The theme song of the mighty bully Maguire by James Brown, and plays during the best scene in cinema history. Mr. Ditkovich Peter Parker's landlord, first appearing in Spider-Man 2. He was a completely original character made for the film. And do not forget, he needs his rent. Now. J. Jonah's Spider-Man In Spider-Man 2.1, it features a deleted scene in which Jameson is seen wearing the Spider-Man suit and posing around in his office. I'm guessing it was removed because they thought it was too weird, but it is a really funny scene, so I don't mind it. Craven in Spider-Man 1 game For the Xbox version only, Craven the Hunter is an antagonist in the Spider-Man movie game. I don't know why Craven and his levels are exclusive to Xbox, but it seems that some people were surprised when they learned so. Doctor Strange name drop In Spider-Man 2, Jonah is talking with Hoffman about name ideas for the then unnamed Dr. Octopus. While discussing some ideas, Hoffman suggests the name Dr. Strange, to which Jonah replies with that's taken. It was a cool little easter egg at the time, hinting at a bigger Marvel Universe, but now it's even cooler since Dr. Strange and Spider-Man just had a movie together, and Raimi is directing a Dr. Strange film. Spider-Man friend or foe 
Like mentioned earlier, Spider-Man Friend or Foe is one of the four games based off the Raimi trilogy. However, while this game uses the Raimi-verse characters and designs, it has its own original story and different voice actors. High Mountain Studios Spider-Man 4 Fan Film High Mountain Studios is a YouTube channel that used to do short fan films, typically LEGO stop motions. However, in February of 2019, they announced that they would be developing a Spider-Man 4 fan film. This project got a lot of attention, but it has been in production for three years at this point. Luckily though, they did get the funding, and it looks like production is going nicely. Now the project itself looks really good, the music is great and the costumes look on point. Excited for this one, and hope it comes out relatively soon. Just fine. Let's talk. Individual names for Doc Ock's arms. During the making of Spider Man 2, Alfred Molina named his tentacles Harry, Larry, Flo, and Mo. Harry and Larry were the lower arms, while the top two were Flo and Mo. Aerosmith Spider Man theme cover. In 2002, Famous rock band Aerosmith did a cover of the classic 1967 Spider-Man theme for the movie. I personally think it's really cool and it sounds perfect for the time and the film. Unused Venom animatronic Originally, the crew of Spider-Man 3 were going to use an animatronic for Venom instead of all CGI. This animatronic looked insane and it was even used in the first teaser trailer for the film. I'm not exactly sure why it was scrapped but I'm guessing that it was either too scary or was too much of a hassle to get it to work. But whatever the reason was, I'm still curious to see what it would've looked like if it was in the movie, because it looks sick. TASM 1 and Homecoming use Spider-Man 4 plot points. While I couldn't find anything confirming this, Spider-Man 4 was supposed to have Vulture in it and reportedly Lizard 2, and of course Lizard and Vulture appear separately in those movies so it would make sense that the producers would borrow some unused plot points for them. Concept Art There were several pieces of concept art made for the movies. Some of them reveal different Spider-Man suits, different Green Goblin designs, different Doc Ock designs, and villains we never got to see in the trilogy like Lizard and Black Cat. Probably the most famous piece of concept art is the Spider-Man 4 storyboards and Vulture fight animatic, since it's the closest thing we got to an actual scene of that movie. If you want to see more concept art, I recommend Channel Pup and the Lord's Legion's videos about them, as they go more in detail. Organic webbing came from James Cameron. Before Sam Raimi was set to make a Spider-Man film, Titanic director James Cameron was signed to direct a Spider-Man movie. This movie of course never saw the light of day, but many years later screenwriter for Raimi's Spider-Man film David Cope said that he was influenced by many of Cameron's ideas from his Spider-Man film, with one being the organic webbing. One little interesting side note about Cameron's movie that I found was that Electro and Sandman were set to be the villains for it. Spider-Side YTP Series Spider-Side is a YouTuber who is most well known for his Spider-Man YouTube poops that ran from 2018 to 2019. This was probably the most popular Spider-Man YTP series, and even had a story to it. Mechanical Web Shooters Remember when I said earlier that organic webbing wasn't always the plan? Well, at first Toby's Peter was supposed to have web shooters, as seen in this very first teaser trailer for the film, and this concept art. Earth 96283 This is the dimension assigned to the Raimi verse. Tanas is canon to the Raimi verse. Tanas refers to Spider Man the new animated series, or MTV Spider Man. The show was created after the first Spider Man film, and meant to serve as a follow up to it. However, many consider it no longer canon because Spider Man 2 messed up the timeline and consistency. 
The series got cancelled after only 13 episodes. Alex Ross sued. As mentioned earlier, there were several pieces of concept art made for the first film, and one of them was comic book writer Alex Ross's unique take on the Spider-Man suit. Although the suit was never in the film, it did actually get made. In my opinion, I don't think it would have worked. Even though Ross is an extremely talented artist, the costume doesn't look nearly as good as the one we got when you look at the actual thing. It's just one of those things that looks better in comic form. David Cope's Spider-Man 2 and 3 Screenwriter David Cope had different ideas in mind for the sequels. In 2020, he would reveal in an interview with Collider that his idea for the trilogy would have included a Gwen Stacy Harry Osborn love triangle, and that Gwen would have actually been killed in the second movie. Apparently, Cope also had plans to implement Black Cat and Lizard into the films, as well as a subplot about Peter's parents. Bruce Campbell is Mysterio. As mentioned earlier, Bruce Campbell was rumored to have a cameo in the fourth film as Mysterio. However, Bruce Campbell denies this rumor, saying that it was all bullshit speculation. Doc Ock in Spider-Man 1 David Cope's original script for the first Spider-Man film included both Green Goblin and Doc Ock as the villains. Otto was eventually dropped from the script to make things less convoluted. Punisher cameo in Spider-Man 2 Towards the end of the film, when Mary Jane runs away from her wedding and passes by a fountain, a man in a dark coat turns toward the camera. The actor here is Thomas Jane's stunt double, intended to be the Punisher. Originally, Thomas Jane was supposed to be used for this cameo, as a nod to the 2004 Punisher film, but conflicts with his acting schedule prevented this from happening. Apparently there were also plans for Spider-Man and the Punisher to cross paths later down the road. For Twitter Incident In June of 2019, the official Marvel Twitter account tweeted a picture of a number 4 written in webbing with the hashtag Marvel Comics. After this picture was posted, many people began to get hyped as they believed Raimi's Spider-Man 4 was being adapted into comic form. Sadly, however, over the coming weeks we would learn that this 4 was just a number in a countdown. And what was it leading to? An announcement of an unrelated comic series being written by J.J. Abrams and his son Henry Abrams. God damn it. Lizard and Black Cat in Spider-Man 2. Like I mentioned before, David Cope's Spider-Man 2 script apparently included the Lizard and Black Cat. Eddie Brock in Spider-Man 1. In Spider-Man 1, Robbie Robertson says to Jonah that Eddie has been trying to photograph Spider-Man for weeks, confirming that there was an Eddie at the time of Spider-Man 1. And although Eddie Brock is never in the film, he actually was supposed to be, as actor R.C. Everback was cast as Brock for the film. He actually did film some scenes for the movie, but none of them have been released. Vulture in Spider-Man 3 Spider-Man 3 producer Grant Curtis said that Sam and his brother Ivan's original idea for Spider-Man 3 included the Vulture teaming up with Sandman to wreak havoc on New York. Actor Ben Kingsley was almost cast as the Vulture, and prototype wings were even built. But plans were ultimately scrapped as pressure was mounting for Raimi to put Venom in the third installment. Green Goblin kills MJ. I couldn't find anything about this entry that relates to the Raimi films, but I'm guessing that in an early draft of one of the scripts she actually died. Either that or there was an idea of that happening floating around. Mr. Ditkovich is Craven the Hunter. Supposedly, Mr. Ditkovich was going to be revealed as a retired Craven the Hunter in Spider-Man 4. This information was first posted on the Spider-Man Films Wiki, and besides that there is no other source confirming this to be true, so it could be all made up. And that does seem to be the case, because now that line has been removed from the wiki. Fourth wall breaks in Spider-Man 1 game ending. At the end of the Spider-Man movie game, Peter says to the player, looks like you're done now, go outside and play. Following this, a lot of children went outside and pretended to be Spider-Man in their backyards or at the playground. Ah, simpler times. Lizard and Morbius in Spider-Man 3 game. Morbius appears in the PSP, PS2, 
and Wii versions of the game, while Lizard is in all the versions. Spider-Man 5 and 6 Before the cancellation of Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man 5 and 6 were already planned to happen. While it is unclear what the plot for these movies were, Sony did hire James Vanderbilt as the screenwriter. Following the scrapping of Spider-Man 4, James would go on to be the screenwriter for the Amazing Spider-Man films, so it's safe to assume that Spider-Man 5 would have had Lizard as the villain, and Spider-Man 6 featuring Electro or vice versa. Hot Toys Figures Hot Toys are a company based in Hong Kong who are known for their highly detailed figures of various characters. They have made a total of six Raimi-based figures, this being Spider-Man, Black Suit Spider-Man, New Goblin, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and another Spider-Man for No Way Home. You can technically say there are seven, as the Black Suit Spider-Man figure comes with a Sandman sculpt. These figures are very expensive, with the Spider-Man one going for as high as $700. Other Marvel Characters in Novels The official novelizations for the films mention several different characters from the Marvel Universe. These include, Red Skull, Captain America, X-Men, Daredevil, The Hulk, and Hank Pym. Spider-Man 3 Final Swing Spider-Man 3 was once supposed to end on a final swing. However, this final swing scene was cut from the film because the ending of Spider-Man 3 was very sad, so a final swing may have ended up feeling off. Fortunately, there is a 5 second unfinished CGI scene that is believed to be this final swing. I think they maybe could have worked a final swing scene in, but I understand why they opted not to do so. The Vultress In one idea for Spider-Man 4, Felicia Hardy would have made an appearance as the daughter of the Vulture. Instead of becoming the Black Cat however, she would become the Vultress, which would have been an original character. The actress who was set to play the Vultress was Anne Hathaway. Hugh Jackman Wolverine Cameo According to Jackman, his Wolverine was set to make a cameo in the first Spider-Man film, but it got scrapped because the crew were not able to get the Wolverine suit from the 2000 X-Men movie. It sucks that that happened because I think this could have been really cool. Doc Ock falls in love with MJ. In 2002, author Michael Chabon was brought in to write a script for Spider-Man 2. His script included an odd take on Dr. Octopus, which would have seen him be the same age as Peter and MJ. This Doc Ock would have also been in love with MJ, with the two even going on a date together at an Ethiopian restaurant. Along with this, it would have been revealed in Chabon's take that Doc Ock was the one behind the radioactive spiders that gave Peter his powers, and that he has developed an anti-Spider-Man injection that would strip Peter of his abilities. I'm glad that this stuff never happened, because a love triangle between a teenage Doc Ock, Peter, and MJ would have been awkward. Vulture's Feathers in Spider-Man 2 Game In the Spider-Man 1 game, the Vulture boss fight takes place atop the Chrysler building. In the Spider-Man 2 game, if you go back to that location, you will see that there are vulture feathers scattered on the roof, as a call back to the previous game. Green Goblin looks like a Power Ranger. Many people are not fans of the Green Goblin suit, with one of the most common complaints being that it looks like a Power Ranger villain. I sorta of get this comparison, but I don't really think it does too much. I personally love the Goblin suit, I think it is cool and seeing Defoe's mouth and eyes moving behind the mask is creepy and has some nice symbolism. And with that, we're halfway through the iceberg. Thanks for joining me thus far, and be on the lookout for part 2 coming soon. Peace. You know what we call that? We call that a web-slinging ass-kicking.